Hey guys, what's up? This is DCD19, and today we're going to be doing a review of the Coolpix L820 digital camera. Alright, so now we can see the actual camera itself, and you'll immediately notice that it's certainly not the most compact camera out there. It is quite smaller than a DSLR, however, it's much bigger than a typical point and shoot. That being said, though, it does have a 30x optical zoom, which means the lens are going to be much bigger, and that being said, also, it includes AA batteries instead of rechargeable batteries, which take up a lot more room. However, I'm pretty happy with the size of the camera, and as long as you don't have the intent to put it in your pocket, it should be just fine. So let's start off by reading off the specs of the camera. It has a 16 megapixel shooter, along with a viewfinder that is an LCD, VGA quality, unfortunately no optical viewfinder here. The ISO is 125 to 1600, which you can configure. Uh, and the max aperture is 3.0. The dimensions are 4.4 times 3.0 times 3.3 inches, and it weighs 16.6 .6 ounces with the batteries, and the batteries are included in the box. So this retails for $199, uh, 199 on Amazon and Best Buy, but the suggested MSRP is $280. Don't pay more than that. $199 is the price that you can find. Um, beyond that, it has a 30 times optical zoom, as I said, which is quite impressive for a camera like this, a typical point and shoot. So let's go ahead and get into the build quality of the camera. Alright, so let's take a quick tour around the camera. So we can start 16.6 .6 ounces, so just a little over a pound. It's not the lightest camera out there, but it works. Alright, so let's start from the top and get our way down. We start with our flash, which pops out like that. It is not motorized, so you're going to have to click that little button there. We have a zoom, We've got our 3.0 inches, 3 inches, uh, VGA quality LCD, which is our only viewfinder on this camera. We've got our stereo mics, along with a speaker, which is terrible, don't ever use that. Uh, we've got another zoom, our focus and capture button. We've got one of these orange LEDs or uh, lights when you focus in low light. Um, we've got our on and off switch, a record button, that's how you uh, record the 1080p video that this camera is capable of. We've got some branding Nikon Coolpix LA20. We have an indicator light for our flash, so that will light up red when it's going to flash while you're focusing. We've got some menu buttons. This can change uh, certain menus. That can uh, take you to all your photos. We've got aperture, or not aperture, I mean, we have exposure, flash, uh, macro, and I forget what this setting does, but we'll figure it out when we get into the camera. We've got our menu button, and finally our trash. So the camera, we have our grip here, pretty ergonomic. In fact, that's pretty much what it's designed for. And as you can see here, the lens protrudes quite a bit. It's not a small lens. It's non-renewable because it's a point and shoot, but it's it, it's a decent size. It's not a it's not a small camera necessarily, but it gets the job done for what it is. So here, then we have our threaded uh, tripod mount. And finally, this is where we have our battery and our micro SD card. So as you can see, it takes four batteries there, along with our micro SD card, which goes in right there. So that's the build. It's all made out of plastic. It's not a premium feeling necessarily, but it's definitely not going to fall apart. It's pretty much exactly what you expect from a camera of this price range. So there we go with some sample shots that I took on my recent vacation to Mexico. And right when I got this camera, I was really wowed by the image quality. If you look at the detail, the zoom, the ability to take in everything in the picture, that's really what this camera is able to do. 
With that 30 times optical zoom, I was able to use macro shots and get really close up on some of those flowers and some of those other objects that I took pictures of. So what's great about this camera is the image quality is, for the price point, quite excellent, especially with the large sensor, the CMOS sensor, which means that it's better in low light conditions. Now, to say it's better in low light conditions would be a bit of a stretch because I think that's one of the weakest points of this camera. Whenever I took pictures in low lights, even with presets such as night or indoor, the camera also often struggled to focus and to take high quality images. The flash worked pretty well, but of course it looked a little washed out just because it's a bright white light. That being said, the indoor quality was decent enough, but it's not necessarily the best for low light conditions. So I'm very happy with the picture quality, but let's go on and get on to some video. All of that video was taken outside with wind, which happened to deteriorate the audio quality quite a bit, and I apologize that I could not fix it in post-editing. That does, however, say something about the audio quality of the mics. They're not necessarily good for outdoor use with windy days. There is a setting that Nikon provides to um, compensate for the wind and white noise. However, I did not have those on that setting on during my testing. Overall, though, the video quality was very good and I'm pretty happy with the saturation and the white balance that were kept up throughout the video. However, this camera does struggle to autofocus as you saw in the last video when I tried to zoom in on the grass. It was not able to focus even with autofocus on. That is a weak point of this camera, but then again, it's not necessarily a dedicated camcorder. For 1080p video recording, I'm very, very happy with this camera. So now onto my final impressions of this Nikon Coolpix L820. Well, I thought the image quality was very, very impressive, however, there was some fading on the edges that I did notice, and a bit of oversaturation of purple on some photos. Overall, though, there's plenty of pixels to work with, with tons of detail in the pictures and an excellent zoom. Overall, image quality was way better than I expected, and for $199, I don't think you can beat it. Beyond that, video quality is pretty impressive, with some issues such as autofocus and some weaker mics, however, it's what I expect, and it was pretty good. Still something I'm going to use is the 1080p video recording in all my videos. On from then, the video, the uh, build quality of this camera is quite impressive, but it's not necessarily the best. It's not the most premium feel, however, it'll stand up for a couple of drops and will last for quite a while. On from that, the VGA quality LCD featured right here is quite good with better pixel density than I would have expected. The camera tends to be responsive, except in low light conditions. So that'll finish it up for today's video. This is an absolute recommendation, a great camera, and something I will be using in the future. So anyways, guys, that will finish it off for today's video. If you enjoyed, be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe. Have a nice day!